here. Hi, this is Mark and Judy. We're here to tell you. We're at Ugly Dog Training. Don't let um, Oh, sorry. Yeah. All right. So, a couple things. First and most important thing was you were rushing from the very beginning when you got to the, the door you had to open up. One of the benefits of being here today, or being at your house, right, with the pool there, is that there's no external reason to rush, right? We don't have to do it because of other people or anything like that. Um, but it's normal that we get wound up inside and we have to move along. Remember when we sat out on the, on the deck and we wrote out the whole list of how to do something, right, one piece at a time? You always have to be focused on the one thing that you're doing now and what's going to follow it. Don't get too far down the list thinking about what's way down there. Because what's going to make everything go well is that each component works properly. There's a reason why we do each thing the way that we do. And if you pass over it, you might get away with it okay, but it's going to bite you in the ass somewhere down the trail, either in that sequence or in the next sequence or whatever. So you need to become aware of your internal sense of when you're getting rushed or wound up. And just stop doing the dog stuff all together. Just stop right where you're at. Take a deep breath, do your math, do whatever you want to do. To just slow yourself down. And before you start, you should be able to tell yourself what you're going to do in that event and why, and what's the next step after. Don't even worry about beyond that, okay? <coughs> if you can't slow down and take the time to do that, it's very unlikely that you're going to do it correctly. You're going to rush to it. And you won't have much awareness of how you're doing it. So if there's a mistake, you won't be able to think about it after and go back and say, well, what did I do wrong? What do I need to change? Right? So the biggest thing in all this is slow down. And if you make a habit of doing this in training, it'll carry over to, to competition. Competition is always going to feel pressured, even if you say, I don't care if I win. I don't care. You know, it's still competition. It's competition. There's a bunch of people there, people watching, there's judges, there's rules, all those things. And those are all going to add more pressure. So, if you don't learn how to slow yourself down and focus on the individual steps in an environment like this, once you add all that other stuff in, you know, you'll just go crazy. You're in a clock, will start going... Rrr, 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 rrr. And, and go he gets crazy, too. Well, absolutely, right? Because he follows you. Nerve pill time. The other, the other thing that's... <laughs> there you go. The other thing that's really important up here is you've got to focus on how to manage each step. So, for instance, with the mat, if he doesn't do it at whatever level you start at, then you've got to be able to think, what are the different things I've done to help him? And how far back in this do I need to go to help him? And I would always say, if the problem seems to revolve around being in a new place or some kind of new distraction, go way back with the help. Do something super easy so he definitely does it right. Because then it's very easy in the next evolution to take a step forward, say, okay, I'll give a little less, a little less help and a little less help. If you don't go back far enough, then he's very likely to fail, and that affects both of you. You get nervous, and he gets nervous and unsure, okay? So it's always better in a new environment to go back a lot with the help. But be aware that you did that, and then the next time do a little less and a little less, okay? And you have to know in each part of what you're doing, you know, what are the important things. So for instance, knowing that when I call his name, what I'm trying to do is get a connection between us. So you can't call his name and then go off doing something, right? You have to go, okay, the reason for calling his name is to get him connected to me. It means I gotta connect to him. So I go, hey, we're over. All right, we're right here? Good, now what do I wanna do with that attention? And did you see how well he did the map when you cut out all of the craziness you were doing? He went all the way from where you were standing to the mat, right? Why do you try to bite my toes? Because you were stomping on his feet. It looked like you're doing a Mexican hat dance. <laughs> right? He didn't do it still. Um, because you did it even when his feet were on the mat. Yeah. Right? So well, how does he know why you're doing this? Right? Well, you say mat and then stepping on his feet. Yeah. Okay. Because what, what does it mean when I say go to the mat? Right. All of you be on that thing, right? Now, his back end was off a little bit. I don't really care about that right now. It's not that important. The front is what's important. But he didn't try to bite me at all when I did it. It was a little growly when I did it at the end, because you had already established that through. So just, again, an example of slow yourself down and think about what am I trying to do? I'm not just trying to step on his feet. 
I'm trying to teach him that his feet need to be on the mat. So I was a little slower about it, and I only did it when his feet were off. Um, throughout a lot of this, your bridging is quite random. You're saying why yes when you don't really have the behavior you want, and you're intermediate bridging for things that you don't really want. So you got to focus more on those being a reflection of what he's doing. So as an example, at one point when you stepped on his foot from to move it back, you said yes, and then went to step on it again. Oh. Well, if it was yes, then it's right. So that yes in this case should mean good, you know, <laughs> get stepped on. And I'm not really trying to step on his feet anyway, I'm just trying to touch him. Oh. He doesn't really want me to touch him, so I'm not trying to, you know, stomp on him. Um, all I have to do is touch it, and, and he'll move back a little bit. What made him squeal? Did you grab his leg? Uh, yeah, I hooked right inside there. Um, so if I wasn't there to do that, then you would have to have a response to what he did, which is fine. And it's got to be that you freeze up. The only reason that I stopped him like that is because I knew you were going to carry through regardless and he would get rewarded for getting up. Right? So it's very simple. If he gets off of that thing without having heard Toby, then the whole thing should come to a freeze until he gets back on it so that he doesn't want to get off. So essentially what you're teaching him is to try and cheat. So what he's learned is, okay, I don't really have to hear T-O-B-Y. I have to see one of these things. Because there's certain things you do before you say his name. Remember a couple weeks ago at the pool, I was having you intentionally do those things, you know, wave the thing around on purpose and not do it. I was doing that in part to show him that they didn't mean anything, but also to make you more aware of what you're doing. So really think about the key is is that he's hearing the name and then releasing. And if he releases before that, even if you were just about to say it, you just freeze up. You know? And then the last thing I would say is, um, he really put a lot of effort into trying to get that toy once he dropped it again. You were about to go pick it up for him, mm -hmm. right? or try to get it. Mm -hmm. Think about like if you were in a wheelchair and the dog wanted to play ball with you. Picking it up off the ground wouldn't be an option. How quickly would the dog learn to pick it up and put it in your lap? Right? So don't over-enable him, you know, give him a chance to work through. And then the other thing was, I was very persistent in encouraging him. Right? Whereas you kind of went flat and quiet, like, ah, it's not going to work. Because I thought you'd do it. Right, 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 <laughs> I'm sure. But so, you know, when the dog's putting out effort, you know, encourage him, let him know, yeah, yeah, you're on the right track, keep doing it, keep doing it, right? And eventually we realized we had to help him a little bit, it was a little screwed up the way it was in the corner there, and it was just not in the right place. Um, but he worked through it really well, so I helped him just a little. I didn't go, okay, I have to go get it. I was like, okay, that was good, I'll knock it a little bit closer to you. So again, the golden rule, give as much help as the dog needs, but not more. So you were ready to just flat out go get the thing, right? And that would prevent him doing all that effort and working to get it and everything.